Box Hypnosis Time Effects Processor. It is a standalone effects processor uh, that you can undoubtedly use for anything, but it's particularly ideal for synthesizer players. And I think it's aimed, a, it's <laughs> looking at the graphic design here, uh, I'm gonna guess that it's kind of aimed towards a sort of synthwave audience. And also some of the ads from Dreadbox have suggested that as well. So that is really cool. As a synth player, I typically embrace analog synths from the past that don't use effects. Um, but of course, you've probably seen me demonstrate some uh, synths that did have effects. I have to admit, throughout most of my life, effects processors have been digital rack mount devices or digital devices built into analog devices. So they're always parametric and they're not very... They're, they're, they don't have the same experience as playing an analog synthesizer where you have basically knob per function and you can make changes, multiple changes simultaneously on the fly, which is what I like about analog synthesizers. So it's fantastic that the hypnosis uh, is like that. It's like, it's like basically analog guitar effect pedals crammed into a box that's suitable for uh, keyboard players to use. So next, and I'm sure there's someone out there right now saying, why are you still talking? Let's hear this thing. I do want to tell you what I'm using uh, because I don't think you can see it. Uh, I wanted to use a synthesizer that would benefit greatly from a device like this. So I have chosen, I mean, throughout this demonstration series, I'm going to be using the Roland Alpha Juno 1, which is also, uh, which is actually from the 80s. And... Um, it is basically a Roland DCO polysynth, and it has those Roland DCOs that were popular with Roland in the early and mid 80s. And so they definitely can use a little bit of livening. That's the nicest way I can put it. And uh, the sounds that I'm going to be using, well, the primary demonstration sound I'm going to be using, I have the chorus that uh, Roland provided turned off. So you won't be hearing any chorusing on it uh, coming from the device. All chorusing that you'll hear will be coming from the hypnosis, which we're now going to talk about. Okay, this is the Alpha Juno sound I've sort of chosen as a great sound to demonstrate the chorus flanger portion of the hypnosis, which is what I'm going to be demonstrating in this video, chorus flanger. So here's the sound without any uh, effect. I have to admit it sounds pretty good uh, for Roland DCOs. Yeah, even without an effect, but uh, effects would certainly liven it up. If you just had this playing throughout a song, it would get at least a little bit boring. It could be a lot more beautiful, and that's where the hypnosis comes in. So let's have a listen. Okay, on the hypnosis, when the bypass button light is out, that means bypass is happening. When the light is on, that means that bypass is not happening. And I don't think any company, there isn't any standard for whether the light means that bypass is happening or the light means that bypass is not happening. So when the light is on, bypass is not happening. So, okay, so we're dealing with the chorus flanger. So we have the light on for the chorus flanger button. Uh, that's how the interface basically works here. You press the button for the effect you want to have happening. And certainly we're going to get to a point where you'll realize that all three can be happening simultaneously, which is a treat. We also have input and output volume. So you can set uh, how much the, the amplitude of what's coming in and the amplitude of what's coming out. Okay, so now we're gonna dive over here to the chorus flanger section where you have four different controls, time, depth and rate of the LFO, and feedback, which is when we get into the sort of flanger effect. But initially, we're gonna be dealing with time. So here is our sound. Let me give you a reminder of what our sound sounds like. And now we'll start listening to it with chorus. This recording is in stereo, so you can hear that suddenly we leapt into stereo because I don't have the output of the Alpha Juno coming out in stereo. 
because the stereo would just be the chorus, which we're not using. Okay. Already we have some stereo breath, which sounds nice. Uh, but what we want to do to get different chorus sounds is start turning the time up. Now you can start hearing the pattern of the chorus itself as opposed to the pattern that this patch actually has. Just as a reminder, here's what it sounds like without. Here's with. Let's keep turning the time up. Let's get it way up here. Compared to the original now, because we're pretty much all the way up here. So that's the effect we get. There's sort of a stereo breath that occurs. It's a relatively subtle effect right now without any feedback or any LFO. So let's start adding LFO. Start hearing the typical chorus effect coming in now. It is very slow because we have our rate so low. So maybe we should turn the rate up so that we can get a sense of what's really happening here. getting into because the depth is deep enough we're starting to get into some pitch variations with the chorusing because basically what the depth what the LFO is doing is turning the time knob back and forth by itself and the faster it does that the more we'll get uh, this sort of pitch effect so that's basically what the depth knob is doing is turning that knob and that's why we're starting to hear um, that's what the LFO is doing. It's basically turning the time knob, and that's why we're starting to hear these pitch variations. But those are characteristic of the chorus effect. And of course, they become really overt. The more you turn up the depth. And if we start turning the rate up, it'll go crazy. I'm going to guess you probably don't want that effect, but you'll notice that the LFO effect is going uh, left and then right and then left and then right. So it is a stereo effect that is swinging within the stereo field. We can turn that right up. Okay, that's annoying, obnoxious, and weird. But if we back off the depth, uh, it could create an effect you might desire. Or maybe not, but <laughs> let's bring the rate down a little bit.
So there's our full on, very chorusy chorus effect. And of course, we can back time off and get different sounds for that. Uh, the less the time, the less overt the effect is, and there's sort of a less stereo feel to it. <laughs> is really nice. Okay, let's let's be reminded of what we're working with here. As opposed to with the effect. Okay, now we can work our way down to the feedback, which is where we get into the sort of flanger range. Yeah, I'm not talking because I'm sitting here enjoying how cool that sounds. Okay. And so now I've turned up the rate of the LFO, so it's causing the everything to sound all crazy. So the feedback has and the rate have made it insane. But if we turn down the time, we can get back into something that sounds like chords. And this is reminding me of a lot of stuff that I remember from the 70s and 80s, which is cool. But as you can see, with the different settings, you can get a really wide variety of really immediately pleasant sounding sounds. It's all sweet spot with this. Okay, so in addition to that functionality, which we could continue to mix and match with these knobs. I don't know why I said mix and match. I always say it and it drives me crazy. We can continue to make subtle variations in these knob settings to get different effects and different sounds. And uh, there's, there's really a lot of room to subtly create new textures.
But there is one more thing we can do. We can affect the LFO wave that's being used here. There are three different settings for LFO wave and they are accessible over here. So right here we have chorus flange chosen. You'll notice it says wave down beneath it. So to access the wave functionality, you hold down the chorus button. Then all three lights are blinking. Now what they mean is chorus uh, waveform one, two, and three. So we can choose the second waveform. We've been listening to just basically a sine wave. And so here's the second one. I'll make it obvious so we can hear it. And then here's the third one. Choose the third one. Kablam. This is kind of a sample and hold ish sort of sound. <laughs> wow. Actually, you're hearing those sort of uh, notes come in. That's because the feedback actually kind of self oscillates. Okay, so those are your three different waveforms that you can have uh, to apply to the LFO that will affect your, well, the depth and rate. They're the LFOs that will affect the time that you can adjust with the depth and rate. And so this is basically the chorus and flanger for the Dreadbox hypnosis. Go back to one. Let's try some different sounds here. Uh, taking a relatively boring xylophone and making it into something special. Let's see what else.
don't forget, you can, you know, mess with it in real time. the chorus flange section of the hypnosis time effects processor from dreadbox (laughs) 